seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. And I just loved the whole collaboration aspect of, of this, you know, the, the fact that you did want um, the cast to build upon their own stories and, you know, put some real life into it and all of that. I mean, you know, there's, there's so much to, yeah. <laughs> no, no, you're right there. I mean, what you say about putting their real life into it, that's the other thing that there's, they ended up semi, I didn't know this. I didn't know where we were going exactly. And I like that. I like that we didn't we didn't know what we were doing exactly. But I'll in the, end, the cast, I yeah, think well, the cast weren't too happy with that, though. <laughs> no, no, not not at first. But but in the end, we made the characters. They're they're pretty much all of them semi autobiographical. Some more yeah. than others, the characters. But so that was essentially getting to know the actors, and then deciding okay, merging a lot of their unique real life experiences with the the character, the fictional characters that I've come up with. And in some cases, their real life was so damn interesting that we, we pretty much replaced most of the character I've come up with, <laughs> but, but yeah. still in the same setting and so on as, as the idea, but just finding, well, this is better or this is... And I'll give you one classic example. Um, one of the actors, he, he was telling me his life... So, I, so one of my techniques was really to interview people um, or just get to know them over a period of time. Yeah. And one actor, he was telling me his life story and it was just the usual sort of stuff, going to college, blah, 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 you know, getting ready. Talk, started from a young age up. Then at a certain point he said, so was, when I was 10 years old, I um, got kidnapped and <laughs> I was, um, yeah. you know, forced into child labor. Blah, blah. And then he just carried on as if he'd said nothing. He said, then, yeah. then I went to college and I said, and I went, hang on a minute, what? 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 <laughs> and so... And then I so with each actor, I said to them, "Will you? Are you willing to put this on screen? Like kind of high, highly traumatic stuff in many cases." Mm. And I just think that's super powerful to to do that. But I, but it's also the other thing. It's a dangerous directing technique, psychological or yeah, psychologically, I guess. In that, you know, you're putting people's real, especially with less experienced actors. We had a mixture here. Mm. Um, but you know you got to you've got to be careful because it's a, it's actually don't you think acting can be a dangerous pr profession? Yeah, sure. I mean, lo loads of actors have kind of have lost it after playing certain roles, haven't they? I think David <laughs> Thewlis and Naked lost it a bit after a right. while when he played Freddy Krueger. Um, but yeah, obviously that's a different thing to put in their real life selves in. Um, no, actually, Freddy Krueger was that was his real life. It was. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't it? I didn't realize I was there. Yeah, that's all the truth. <laughs> but no, no, it is. It is a dangerous. I was going to say, um, I was gonna say that um, I, I think it's really like that was probably quite a cathartic thing for the actor mm. Um, mm. who was going through the kidnapping uh, thing. You know, to display that on screen because it's kind of like you know when I write poetry or you you know we we write stuff. It's kind of cathartic getting out your own stuff, isn't it? But yes. Yes. Playing that role on screen, you know, is a completely, <laughs> completely different sort of thing. But but I felt that the whole film was cathartic um, yeah. because really, the, the year twenty twenty with COVID and everything has been cathartic, you know. And that's what I think you really capture in the film. Um, it's thank just you. Thank you for summarising the story for me. You've done my job. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I mean, it really. Um, I think it kind of sums up that we've all been going through our own personal stories during this time. And I think for a lot of people, it has felt mm. like a move, you know, the COVID world. It's kind of like we're all starring in our own little worlds because we are living in unprecedented times. Yeah. And what you did was you, you, you didn't even focus on COVID. You know, COVID's kind of like the, the, the character that doesn't really appear in the film, or, or it does, but in a, mm. you know, some way. Um, you know, your film isn't about COVID, but at the same time, those emotional responses that the people had, I don't think could have happened in a world that wasn't COVID, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. That makes sense. That, that makes sense. Okay. Mm, yeah, I think, I think it's... Uh, oh, I just think it's, it's, it's cathartic as a, as a viewer, as much as it probably was for the cast and the people involved, was my, kind of my point. Yeah, yeah. I think that relates to... I was trying to find trigger points, which are universal themes that people I know will cause pain one way or another. 
like you don't have to exp have experienced specifically certain um, events that the characters have, but there's there's types of situations where that, um, it's not specific. You can just kind of go, yeah, I can relate to that pain or something like that. And then the idea is if you, uh, this is what I think with stories like this, if you trigger the audience's pain one way or another, then then by the end, my goal is to for it to be a healing movie. Do you know what I mean? And but you can only get to a healing movie if you've triggered the pain, unfortunately. <laughs> and it's kind yeah. of the same with the actors as well. You have to you have to break them down.